Well, I'm glad you're here. I do have a word for you today. We're going to eat a few moments and be out in about an hour and a half, okay? No, I'm not going to do that way. It'll be two hours at least. Uh, how many of you give me five minutes at least? Okay, five, 10, 15, 20. How many of you are not going to raise your hand no matter what I say? Okay, all right. This book has the ability to change your life. And uh, we're obviously believers. We term it believing believers. That's not in deference to somebody else who just casually goes to a church. But you know, if you just ride through McDonald's parking lot, you know, you don't necessarily become a Big Mac that way. You have to consume some things and decide it's going to affect your life. Kenneth said it, or Gloria said it this way, if you will keep your words in agreement with God's words, they will change your natural circumstances. So, believers ought to be happier than they are if they're really on their way to heaven. Don't you get tired going to a place where the believers are grumpy all the time? You know why they're grumpy? They're still carrying their baggage that they didn't forgive anybody. They, they decided to hold a grudge. When you hold a grudge and don't do what the Word says, forgive them because you were forgiven. You find out that you get grumpy. Jesus said, I'm going to come and give you life and give you life more abundant. But he also said in John 15, 11, my joy that I have. Can you imagine the joy that Jesus had on the face of the earth? My joy you can have and your joy can be full. Well, I don't try to model that. I just try to taste of that every day and I stay happy. It's a good deal. I'm addicted to joy and Jesus supports my habit. Turn to your neighbor and tell him that. He'll support your habit too if you just get addicted to joy. This is God's word. When he talks, we got to learn to listen. we got to learn to hear. I remember as a kid, son, did you hear me? Yes, I did. Well, clean up the room. Okay. You know, 30 minutes later, an hour later. Did you clean your room? No. Well, you didn't hear what I said. Of course, my wife, she's somewhat like my mother. Not, she's not my mother figure by any stretch of the magic. But she will tell me some things sometimes. And then I have to ask, now, do you mean to do that right now? Or do you want me to wait a day? Because <laughs> lots of times it's simple. Would you take the trash out and empty the other trash cans? Yeah, I, I'll get it. I thought you were going to take the trash out. Oh, you meant right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, God wants you to respond to Him now when you're thinking about it. It's a good thing to respond to God. Miss Cheryl already had us do this. But lift your Bible, shake it, the devil. What happens when you do? Absolutely nothing. It's the Word of God that you hide in your heart, that you speak out of your mouth, and that you joyfully act on. I believe I'm born again. Not because of my feelings, but because the Word said so, and I went through the situation to make sure that I am born again. But you have to act on this. You have to practice this. You have to work at it. And commitment is an act, not a word. It is motion. I didn't tell Miss Cheryl I loved her once, and that was it. I keep doing it, and I act on that. She's not a person that likes a lot of cards. I do. So guess what I give her? I give her a lot of cards. Why are y'all laughing at me? I show her my love. And she shows her love. She is a great cook. I'm testimony of her being a great cook. I got a few minutes left, so let me do this. I want to talk to you about faith for your future. I've done this several times in the past. But I felt this morning, we're making a turn in this nation right now. There's some things that, that have crippled our thinking about the future, not just the COVID, not just the mandates and all of that stuff. But there, there's a mentality that has been suppressing believers. The church has started hiding out like it did in Jesus' day. We cannot do that. I say we cannot do that. You need to be more visible right now than you have been. 
It was during World War II, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who wrote the wonderful book, The Cost of Discipleship. He was in Chicago and had been educated there. He's from Germany. He came over and been educated. But early in the war, in 42, 43, he was such a proponent against Hitler and he, he was ravaging on the radio and doing things to stir up the people. And he said, what am I doing here in Chicago? I got to go back to Germany. That's where my folks are at. That's where the people are at. Why should I shout that from over here? I got to put my life in the middle of it. Wow. And you know the rest of the story. Three days before World War II ended, they killed him because of his voice. Well, I'm not suggesting that you're going to get killed during this time, but I am suggesting it's time for believers to stand up and act on the word. You're not, you're not here just to suck up some air, run up your visa bill and say kumbaya. You're here to change your world. And you can do it. Say amen. amen. And when you trust and obey that that's your assignment, you raise your hope up. You know, and truthfully, I, I found this little meme. The devil doesn't care if you go to church or read your Bible as long as you don't apply it to your life. If you're having problems... Uh, with finances, then make a decision not to keep going in debt. Make a decision to work with God's economy, get out of debt so that when money comes your way, it doesn't stick to you. I mean, so many people say, I can't tithe because I don't have enough to eat. Americans don't look like they don't have enough to eat. <laughs> Pay attention. Yeah, but my kids, they need my money. No, you need to teach them how to make money and let them be self-sufficient. Can I have a better amen, Grandma? You know they have to take responsibility, and that's much of the problem today, is we've had absent parents who refuse to teach their kid what was right and wrong. Now, you have to apply it to your life, and if you want to get out of debt, you decide, okay, I'm going to put first things first. I'm going to reduce the debt that I have. I'm going to apply things. I'm going to pull things back. You can't run to, you know, to Starbucks every day or twice a day and think you're going to save money. It's a cup of coffee. You can make it at home. You can take a tea bag and make it hot. Yes, I like chai tea latte because she likes it. But you can't go get six of them in a day and think you're going to save money. Give me some love. <laughs> so, as usual, I have a one moment, uh, the shades say your future's so bright. We do that to help people know their future is bright. And we always ask this question. If your future's so bright, you've got to realize this. You've got to know the right people. Isn't that good? And do you know Jesus? Have you determined that Jesus is Lord? Amen. I made a silly, goofy thing a while ago in the middle of uh, the prayer, but Mickey Mouse isn't Lord. I'm not knocking Disney. Disney has 40 to 50,000 plus employees that go to work every day. That's a big payroll. That's, that's a big effort, you know? But the thing is, it's not the happiest place on earth. It is not. Where you're sitting right now should be one of the happiest places on earth. When you grow in the Lord, when you get more wisdom, more information, that you can change your world. And it takes you deciding, I'm going to change my world. Give me a better amen than that. Okay. Your future is so bright. James 1.22 says, do, God, do what God's Word says. Don't merely listen to it or you will fool your own selves. Yes. It's like the deal when people say, well, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing. Well, you got to do something about the believing. You want to get out of debt? Start sowing. Harvest comes from a seed in the ground, not talking about the seed. <gasps> i got to save this seed. You don't eat your last seed. You sow it. That's the way you get a harvest. That's the way you change your life. If you're feeling grumpy, put a smile on and sow, sow a smile. And I was grumpy, but 
I'm smiling now, but, but go cheer somebody else up. Amen? Jesus said, just do it, just do it. Jesus is the hope of the world, and the local church is the vehicle by which we express that hope to the world. There are a lot of people who say, well, just, just be yourself and live like you want to, but that's not enough. I've met myself. I've talked to myself. I've woke myself up in the middle of the night talking to myself. And I don't even agree with myself a lot of the time. <laughs> Is that okay, <laughs> Stacy? <laughs> Leonard Ravenhill, who I absolutely loved, uh, I never met him, but he became one of my mentors. You can look him up. Scottish uh, revivalist preacher from the early 1900s. He passed in, in the 70s, I think it was, or early 80s. The church right now has more fashion than passion, is more pathetic than prophetic, is more superficial than supernatural. Now, we use color, we use things to, to, to get somebody's eye gate. We know this, that if your eye gate can see it, most likely you'll remember it longer than you will remember what I said. Now, the truth is, when you get around people that are encouragers and stir you up, you remember how you feel, not always what they said. You had somebody in your past, a grandma, an uncle, you know, uh, that would come to you and he was your favorite. And you couldn't really say why because he was just, he, he just did something. When, when, you, when he left, you missed him, you know. I started with kids and pastors as we traveled through the years. I would do this and still much to this day, we're not traveling as much, but our 23 countries we've been to, I've always met pastors and we, we've, we were not pastor material. Okay, we've only been doing this 20 years, but we've been married 48, and much of that we traveled. We were musicians. We we're we we're trying to get enough money to get a bologna sandwich. You know, I mean, we were we were hungry musicians, and uh, but in the midst of starting the pastor, I learned that a kid will remember you when you influence him in a positive way. Not always your words, but I always walk up to kids and. I pull a $1 bill or two $1 bills or a $5 bill or, or something out. I say, Mom and Dad, don't tell you this, but I'm your rich uncle. <laughs> I got kids today that have grown up who still call me Rich Uncle Steve. <laughs> you know what I was doing? I was sowing seeds that they think of me that way that now I are. Oh, be happy for me. Come on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, here's another thing Leonard Ravenhill said. You can't live wrong and pray right. Sometimes people say, well, I just prayed, nothing happened. Well, I'm not condemning, I'm not judging, but you can't keep living wrong on purpose and think that that's going to work. God knows all of us. David repented many times. He and Bathsheba and all the stuff went on with that. He should have been at war, but he was out watching Bathsheba, you know. But here's the thing. You, you got to make a quality decision. If you call yourself a believer, let's go for it. Let's go on to the fun stuff. Amen? Let's grow up. Uh, our friend Mark Barkley said, It's not our job, not our duty, not our call or assignment in life to create a gospel that is palatable to the deteriorating standards of society. We live in a devolving culture. We need to help it get better. Yes, amen. Jesus isn't coming back for this culture. He's coming back for believers who are part of the church at large. And that's what you got to decide to do. I'm a believing believer, amen? Now, I want you to grow up, and the way you grow up is hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against God. He intends for his incre to increase his kingdom all the time. Your teaching this morning is helping us. How do we take what we have, not to get rich, but to get to the place that we can be a blessing to others? Amen. Amen. Have you thought sometime with some of your relatives that need money? By the way, the best way to bless a relative is never loan them money. Never loan them money. Give it to them. Let it go. Sow it. 
Don't sign your name on a rental agreement for them or on a car. Just help them what you can. But don't, I mean, it'll mess your family up. Anybody had some of that? Oh, yeah. I mean, got relatives. They won't come see you. And when they do call to see you, they're going to remind you, could have borrowed 20. Well, it's not 20 I need. You got 200. Well, really, mama said, we need $2,000. Could you help? Could you help me? You know, you need to realize God wants you to be able to bless people. And blessing people isn't so much about money. It's hearing them enough to move them toward a God that believes in them and has a better intention for them. Amen. Now, how many of you know that part of what we do as far as coming to church is to grow your faith? Faith doesn't work on its own. You need to decide, make a decision. My faith is going to be stronger than it was yesterday. I want to grow up. And growing up means that God intends us to grow regardless of our circumstances. Now, that's a pretty good-sized tree, isn't it? Isn't that nice? Would you look at there? Let's see here. God intends, regardless what you're going through, how many went through COVID? How many of you done with it? Okay. You, you're done with it. You, you're like Paul. You got on the road to Damascus, right? You done with a mask? I mean, the science is, quote, coming around and proving that was useless. <laughs> Sold a lot of masks. <laughs> Ticked some people off. <laughs> but whatever we're going through, we need to realize, and again, uh, I'll bring it up. The tree looks great, but look where it came from. Remember that. Now, here's the, the point of that. It's hard to grow your faith inside of your comfort zone. You want to grow? You have to get out of your comfort zone. Anybody doing Olympics this week, or last week, this week, had to get out of their comfort zone on one thing. They had to get up in the morning and go to it when nobody was watching or cheering them. They had to go to it. You want to know why Stacy sings like he does, why Miss Cheryl and the team do? Because they work at their voices. I'm working at mine, I, at my voice, my, my, my keyboard skills. And, and uh, I'm getting to the place, I'm not sure what key I'm ever in. You know, I'm just playing. And of course, the vocals help me out. They go, what was that? <laughs> but I have to get out of my comfort zone to grow. And you do too. Poke your neighbor and say, get out of your comfort zone. Grow in the Lord. Grow in the Lord. Grow in the Lord. Now, to be growing in the Lord, you've got to be rooted in whatever God has us growing in. And the deal about being rooted is it means you've got to have at least been planted. You've got to find the place where God wants you to grow up. We are here as pastors not to micromanage your life, but to help you grow up. And growing up means you need some direction in things. You can't keep making the same mistakes without being called on it. Uh, Pastor Andrew this morning talked about uh, the Lord had uh, convicted him as, as he was growing his two girls up and, and in their family to stop at every stop sign. How many of y'all like that idea? <laughs> How many of y'all ever missed one and saw a blue light behind you, a red light, okay? It was just a stop sign. Nobody was there. No, you stop. Amen. Help me out. But he said, you got to be rooted. You got you to gotta decide that you can be corrected. Now, you turn these roots upside down and it's kind of like, eh, what is that? Now, I got one last picture to show you here and we'll kind of wrap this section up. I don't care what you're going through. We all go through this, this stuff. The Bible tells us that Jesus said, in the world, you. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about you now. Jesus said, you will face tribulation. You'll face stuff. The world has a lot of four-letter words to say what the stuff is. But you get it, right? You face stuff. I'm going through some stuff. Well, go on through it. If you're going through hell, please don't stop. Go on through. 
Hello? But you're going through stuff. And no matter what you're facing, the truth is about it. There is no reason you can't grow after experiencing some trauma. I mean, we experience trauma all the time with some of your lives. We go through moments where it is, it is bye-bye, Tammy. In fact, they didn't even talk about it today. I'm surprised. You saw the pictures of Tammy up here. Do you still have them? I'll throw them up real quick. Uh, the pictures of Tammy, and then she was, she was at that bed, and the doctor came in and said, we're not doing the operation. There's nothing there. This is too small. Well, Bob, bless his heart, Bob, Bob, kindly stand. He, you're one of my favorite people here. You know it. <laughs> Bob, is, he is a sports fan. He is not a football fan, and he likes, pardon, he, he likes a car that goes fast in a circle, kind of, in an oval. <laughs> right, right. Watch this. He looks mild-mannered, doesn't he? He's a man of few words. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Watch this, though. He calls me on the phone. Pastor, it's over. <laughs> I'm sitting in the office right back there. Pastor, this is Bob, it's over. I'm thinking, she died? <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. For additional tapes by Bob. <laughs> I said, well, well, what do you mean? Well, we're, we're over here at Daytona Beach with Pastor Andrew and Leba. We're out here having, having, having some, some fun. I said, you're not at the hospital having an operation? No. <laughs> now, we go through trauma. That was a traumatic moment for me. Sweet Tammy's not here anymore. <laughs> but here's the deal. Trauma. Coming back, coming back over. There's no reason you can't grow after experiencing some stuff in your life. I don't care if it's divorce, if it's uh, your, your husband, your wife died. I don't care what it is. Amen. Watch this. There's no reason. That is not a photoshopped picture. Shall I give it again? Isn't that beautiful? There's no reason you can't grow after experiencing trauma. You need to make a decision today. All that in the past is behind me. I'm moving forward. I'm going to do everything God tells me because His plans for me, none of them have defeat. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Faith for your future. Glory to God. Glory to God. I've got too much to carry any further right now. Miss, Miss Charity, take me over to 2107. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We'll close with this. Get plugged in. And you need, the reason Ephesians says that there is church, there's apostles, there's prophets, there's evangelists, there's teachers and pastors. The reason is that you need to come together because something happens when we're all together. I appreciate so much the ability to take four cameras and talk to people all around the world. But listen, Media church like this isn't what this is. In other words, we got something this morning you might not have gotten because we look into eyes. We looked at Bob. We looked at Tammy. We heard the music. The, the atmosphere of believers coming together yeah. is something you can't do on a piece of media like a phone, like, a, 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 like this. You can get information, but there's something about looking into somebody's eyes and having the joy of the Lord stir you up. Right. Amen? Amen? So, with that being said, let me ask you a question. We're going to stay in the Word. Did you get anything out of today? Yes, and I'll close it with this because we saw her Friday. This is a young lady who's gone through the last five years, Miss Cheryl, four or five years 
operate the it's four. four years. The same tumor that killed John McCain tried to take her out. She believed God. She got her scriptures and daily, Marta, Grandma Marta, seven to eight times a day, she read these healing scriptures. I am the healer. I'm coming out of this. She came home and got out of it. Now, a couple of weeks ago, she got into a situation where she was believing, getting feeling better, and she started saying, okay, I'm going to make some changes in how I'm being doctored. And, well, anyway, the, the thing was that she had a little bitty med that was kind of helping her with some mobility things. Well, she missed it for a couple of days or something. I don't know. But it got her back in the hospital. And she got to where she could only say three words. The three words were yes, no. But the word that she, third word she could say was absolutely. Wow. We saw her Friday. I wish I had the picture here. You can go on Facebook. Miss Cheryl posted it the other day on Friday. Seeing her now at home. And I'm telling you, it is fun seeing God move in people's lives. When they believe the word, pardon? She's speaking well. She's speaking well. And you can be too. Amen? Stand on your feet. Join me tomorrow morning if you want at 7 o'clock or so on my Facebook out there. Let's say these words together. We're going to say them because part of doing the kingdom work is to say unto the mountain. Say unto your problem. Say unto your body. So we say these words around here and they're good ones. Say it together with me. I am a believer, not a doubter. Now fix that one real quick. Do you believe it or are you doubting it? I mean, this is either true or not. It's like the sun. The cloud can cover it, but you ain't going to get rid of it. It's there. Truth is that way, inconvertible. God has great plans for me. Shout it out loud. God has great plans for me and none of his plans have defeat because I possess a God-given destiny. Now I'm telling you, I'm looking into the eyes of people that may not yet realize it, Pastor Rosella. They don't know they have a destiny to change the world. It all starts when you decide, Ray, I'm going to do my part. It all decides, Steve, do your part. Amen? Here's the reason. I choose to let Jesus' joy dissolve my path. You want to get rid of the stuff back there? Just count it all gone. Yeah, but I've got to deal with it. No, you don't. Cast your care on the Lord. Don't, don't, you know, carry it around with it. But what do I do about it? Cast your care on the Lord. Get the Word of God about it and pray and believe God. And don't keep it stirred up. Amen. Say it again. I choose to let Jesus' joy dissolve my path. I declare 2022 will be greater joy to me. He, I, it will bring yet greater purpose to me. It will bring yet a clearer direction for me. I choose to live by faith, walk in love, pray in so, so that others can know how wonderful a Savior Jesus is. I am a believing believer, not a doubter. So, so I do what? No, you, you read it, but you didn't tell me what you are going to do. So I, I'm not a doubter. I laugh at the enemy. Our biggest loser ever. He is a loser. Don't let him convince you he's won. Because I am a believing believer, not a doubter, I can shout, thank you, thank God, thank God, thank God. Lift your hands toward heaven. Father, I thank you for these folks. I pray right now, favor, wisdom, increase, wholeness, and boldness over everyone in this room and everyone that's watching here today. Father, I pray for for favor to come into their lives, wisdom, making better decisions, increase of whatever it is they need because they believe you and cooperate. More than that, wholeness in their bodies and boldness in your lips. Listen, folks, I'm praying that you'll be bold this week and not careless this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. His word is the truth. Not Pastor Steve, not Pastor Cheryl's, our word is best we can decipher, 
decipher it to you is the truth. Amen. But his word is true. Amen. Believe it. Amen. I just want to encourage everybody watching us online and everybody here. I trust everybody in this room is born again. But if you're not, you can be. It's just a simple thing to say, Jesus, take my life and do something with it. Yes. And it's a supernatural thing that happens. It's not in your mind. It's in your spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in this body. Yeah. And your spirit man is alive with Christ. Just receive him and tell Hallelujah. somebody. Tell Amen. somebody that you made that choice. Witness to somebody. Amen. Amen. Amen.